Well, the Australian media have been duped by a woman who claimed to be an impartial United Nations rapporteur, but Francesca Albanese's bias was then further exposed when the project host, Waleed Ali, asked her this very important question. What would be the right response from Israel to the terror attacks on October 7? In your view, what would the correct yep. response have looked like? The response was to be given in terms of uh, law enforcement, considering that this is occupied territory. It could have relied on the United Nations to demilitarize Hamas if this was the target. <laughs> so, no, Israel shouldn't have responded to the worst terror attacks, the worst loss of life for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. I'll just send in the UN to take weapons off Hamas. What a farcical response. The Red Cross haven't even been able to visit the Israeli hostages, as if the UN could have taken weapons off Hamas. Well, Hillel Neuer, as I said, from United Nations Watch, he's now revealed that Albanese's trip to Australia was sponsored by Palestinian lobby groups. And these groups, the Australian Friends of Palestine Association, the Australia Palestine Advocacy Network, as well as the Free Palestine Melbourne and Palestinian Christians in Australia groups. This is in breach of the United Nations' own code of conduct that bars experts from taking any gift, favour or remuneration. Article 3 of the Code of Conduct states that UN figures should be, and I quote, free from any kind of extraneous influence, either direct or indirect, and they may not seek or accept any favour, gift or remuneration from any non-governmental source for, act for activities carried out in pursuit of his or her mandate. Well, United Nations Watch has now filed papers with the UN chief calling for Francesca Albanese's removal from her position as UN Special Rapporteur. And she should immediately be removed. And she should have made it clear in every single one of those media appearances on the ABC's Q&A at the National Press Club on the project that her trip was sponsored by Palestinian lobby groups. Jewish groups had sent a letter to the ABC demanding that Francesca Albanese not be given a platform on Q&A because of all of the disgraceful and anti-Semitic views she's expressed in the past. The ABC ignored the demand and had her on the show anyway. Now it seems the public broadcaster owes Australian viewers and the Jewish community an apology. They presented someone as independent when, in fact, she was here being paid to be in Australia to sprout hateful views against Israel and Jews. <laughs> Bronwyn, what's your reaction to this, it looks like, a fraud, if not a clear conflict of interest? I'm not surprised. I bothered to take a look. Since the inception of the United Nations Human Rights Council, there have been 45 motions condemning Israel. Um, the United Nations clearly just is against Israel again and again and again. And she's part of that. But it does make you ask this question. The sheer brutality of what was done on the 7th of October, the sh which, which people wouldn't publish because of how it would affront. I think people need to know that brutality mm. because what it was designed to do, perhaps, was to make Israel retaliate with force um, and say we're going to get rid of Hamas. In the meantime, there's been a work right across the Palestinian support groups to, to drum up anti-Semitism or Jew hatred right across mm. the world um, plus the United Nations sent her out here to try and give it a bit of respectability and don't uh, identify her as being part of that Palestinian pan movement. Mm. And when I see those children in the streets... Yes, um, today in Melbourne. I, I just mm. go back to the tactics that socialists around the world always use and it's in their DNA. They all have a youth movement. And the reason is that they're easier to persuade. There's little resistance because the knowledge base isn't there. And so it's not surprising to me that those people who are activists within the um, education system mm. uh, and in places of power mm. can use it to drum up those kids to be sprouting things, many of which I would think some of them didn't even know the meaning of. Oh, I mean, a lot of what they were saying today at those school protests in, in Melbourne. And, Jason, there were hundreds yeah. of school students there. They're meant to be in class. Instead, yeah. they're being indoctrinated to hate Israel and Jews.
And they'll be back tomorrow. There's one organised in Sydney and the propaganda, I'll call it that, that's been passed around um, on social media, it's vile stuff and it's kids saying it. I mean, yeah. these aren't university, you know, idiots, your classic dickheads from university out saying it. These are children in high schools that are now repeating this stuff. But, you know, back a little step on this, this Francesca UN Francesca Albanese. Doesn't it say so much about the Australian media? Did anyone for a moment stop and think, hang on, there's a crisis in the Middle East right now and she's out here doing the press club in Australia, right in the middle of all of this, that she thought this where she should be right now is here, and no one stopped to say, hey, who's paying for you? Or mm -hmm. did anyone for a minute, and this, this is an insight into, the, I guess, the Australian media, if you put the letters UN in front of anyone's name or professor in front of someone's name, there's sort of this, this sort of suggestion, particularly in the ABC, that, oh, they're, they're beautifully white and partial, you know, clean. They're, they're, not, they're not affected by bias or prejudice. Mm. That's her. It was a giveaway from the moment she opened a trap that she mm. was out here on a propaganda tour mm. and nobody stopped. And, and how many times did she pop up on the ABC? In your little montage, I think twice. Then there's ABC radio that would have had a few cracks at her and she would have been reported repeatedly in the news. And no one, all these journalists that are apparently there to, to look into the depth of all of these things, no one stopped for a second to ask the question. And those organisations that sponsored her, mm. you know, don't forget that many of those organisations are directly or indirectly supported by government agencies, given funding through multicultural grants, either directly or indirectly. So, you know, the taxpayer is kicking in on all of this. Yeah. It is disgraceful. And good on you and UN Watch for calling it out. And uh, to the Australian media that kind of missed it, you know, I don't know where you're looking.